What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out first wrestlers to kick out of iconic WWE finishers. Now, when it comes to a wrestler finisher, it's always for the most part, it used to be like when they hit this move, that's it, they're done, you know, the match is over. But as of late, I think it's become a trend for wrestlers be kicking out of finishers and multiple times in a match sometimes. Yes, it creates more dramatic tension and false finishes, but I do think it's, it has taken away from the overall effectiveness of a true finisher. The one person WWE had been protecting for quite some time uh, was Baron Corbin. For the longest time, Baron Corbin, when he hit the end of days, it was over, no one kicked out. The only person that's ever kicked out was Drew McIntyre at this year's uh, WrestleMania. Like, no one's ever kicked out. It was a very big moment. So, in a sense, his finisher was protected. It, you knew once he hit it, you know, it was over. I don't know if it's going to be as protected as much, but I hope it still does, you know, because you want to, you want that finisher to be something where it's like, this is, this is how it, you know, this is how the match is going to end. Once I hit this move, you're done. So, I get it. Sometimes they do it to enhance the match and maybe tell a, a greater story. But I, I'm not the biggest fan of when finishers are hit, people just be kicking out of them. <clears throat> I'm not the biggest fan of that. So, we're going to check out some of these where they happen for the very first time, I'm guessing. So, appreciate all the love and support, man. Let's get right into this one. WWE is filled with iconic finishers. Oh, my like God. Like Undertaker's Tombstone Piledriver, Randy Orton's... Like, I want to make a, a quick caveat. For example... In certain situations, it works for like the John Michaels uh, um, Undertaker matches at WrestleMania. It worked there. Granted, they didn't overdo it per se, but it worked. In certain situations, some matches, they kind of overdo it to the point where damn near every match when they uh, hit their finisher for the most part, somebody kicks out. So that's what I mean by... When they hit the finisher, a lot of times I'm not a big fan of people kicking out. Only if the story demands it and it makes sense and they're not overdoing it, I can give it a slide. I can give it a pass. RKO and many more. But who are the first people to kick out of these legendary moves? I was not just talking about that. The Undertaker made his WWE debut, he found himself in a match against one of the company's biggest wrestlers, The Ultimate Warrior. While the Warrior got the better of the dead man at the start of the match, the Phenom quickly gained control and began wearing down The Ultimate Warrior. Finally, The Undertaker hit his finisher, the Tombstone Piledriver, but The Warrior shockingly kicked out, something no one had ever done before. Mm -hmm. The enraged Undertaker hit The <laughs> Ultimate Warrior with his urn, ending the match in a disqualification. John Cena has five iconic moves, lovingly known by fans as the five, five moves, moves of doom. doom. <laughs> the biggest and most powerful one on the list is the attitude adjustment, or as it used to be known, the FU. Yeah, the FU. Cena was going to need all of that and more when he took on The Undertaker in 2003. The dead man had been through just about everything in WWE, but John Cena was young and hungry and willing to do whatever it took. Cena smacked his opponent with his chain. Yeah, this was a heel John Cena. Those kids may not know who heel John Cena was. I remember. <laughs> allowing him to successfully execute the attitude adjustment. To everyone's surprise and to John Cena's frustration, The Undertaker kicked out of the Doctor of Thugonomics finisher. Even worse, The Undertaker then hit Cena with his finisher and ended the match. After Seth Rollins betrayed the Shield and joined the Authority in 2014, Dean Ambrose made it his personal mission to make Rollins' life great as feud. miserable as possible. Great, great, when great the two feud. were set to face off inside Hell in a Cell, this was basically like winning the lottery for Dean Ambrose. Yep. The lunatic fringe destroyed his former ally, even if it meant hurting himself yep. in the process. It was such a good match, Seth too. Rollins I enjoyed this match. Nearby to help him out. This allowed Seth to hit his finisher, the curb stomp, and get the one, two, no. Dean Ambrose kicked out, something that had never happened up to this point. That's this awesome. Really impressive, but despite that, Seth Rollins still stole the victory thanks to some help from Bray Wyatt. Mm -hmm. This guy may have made himself famous by accident. Before he would start calling himself Triple H, the game was known by his full name, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. On an episode of Raw in 1996, Triple H had a match against a guy named Freddie Joe Floyd, who you may know what? better as Tracy Smothers. During the match, Mr. Perfect came out and took the game's valet away. 
After hitting the pedigree, Triple H saw this and ran after Mr. Perfect, only to get knocked out with a punch to the face. However, let's rewind a bit. If you look closely, you'll see that Freddy Joe Floyd actually gets his shoulder up. I think this oh. is an accident, since Triple H would have stopped the pin himself. Freddy Joe Floyd accidentally wrote himself into the history books as the first <laughs> oh, he did on accident person to kick out <laughs> Triple H's pedigree. That's crazy. WrestleMania 19 was special for many reasons. Oh yeah, one of classic which was that it was the first time we saw Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle go one on one. Great match the too. The two destroyed each other in one of the most physical matches in WrestleMania history. Mm -hmm. Angle was desperate to win since his WWE Championship was on the line. Despite that, Brock Lesnar eventually executed his finisher, the F5. Kurt Angle surprised everyone though, mm -hmm. including Lesnar, by kicking out, something that no one had done before. And like I said, it works in certain situations. I don't like it when it's just like a kind of a, a one-off feud or a, a one-off match where people are just kicking out of everything just to enhance or make this match, I guess you could say, awesome or whatnot. People like to hit the, oh, this is awesome chance when multiple finishers get kicked out. And like I said, I'm all for it. It just has to make sense. It made sense to do that there because you're facing an opponent that is really on your level, you know? So it's it's kind of hard to put them away. You got to put a little bit extra stank on it to put them away. Despite that impressive accomplishment, it wasn't enough. And Lesnar ultimately won the match and the WWE Damn, it almost broke his neck, In too. one of their early encounters, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bret Hart faced off at the 1996 Survivor Series. The winner of the match would receive a shot at the world title, so both men were willing to go the extra mile. No one had kicked out of the Stone Cold Stunner before, so when he saw an opportunity, Austin took it. He planted the hitman with his finisher and quickly went for the cover. But one, Bret was somehow two, able to keep his shoulder yeah. Yep. Unfortunately for Steve Austin, not only had someone kicked out of the Stone Cold Stunner, but Bret Hart ended up winning the match as well. During the late 80s and early 90s, Hulk Hogan ruled WWE. Mm -hmm. He had a number of signature moves, but the Hulkster finisher was the leg drop. The infamous it may not leg be drop. as flashy as today's finishing moves, but nobody ever kicked out of the move. Yep. That was until Hogan wrestled a man named Gunichiro Tenryu. In 1991, WWE and a Japanese wrestling company called SWS were in a show together that pitted WWE biggest star, Hulk Hogan, against SWS's biggest star, Genichiro Tenryu. Both men threw everything they had God at each damn. other, and once an opportunity presented itself, the Hulkster hit Tenryu with the leg drop. But for the first time ever, it didn't win Hulk Hogan the match. Genichiro Tenryu survived the Immortal One's finisher. Not only that, but later on, wow. Hulk Hogan hit a second leg drop, and Tenryu kicked out of that one. Holy well. damn! Fact, that's, that's big. I I may not be super well versed in wrestling, but I know a lot of people didn't people just didn't kick out of Hulk Hogan's leg drop when he was Hulk Hogan. Not you know it's like he, he was the eat your vitamins Hulk Hogan. He was the I have priority booking Hulk Hogan. Many people didn't kick out. It was just unheard of. He kicked out twice in that time period. That's incredible. Act, it was actually a clothesline that got the Hulkster the three wow. count and won him the match. Line. At Unforgiven 2003, Randy Orton took on Shawn Michaels in a match titled Legend vs. Legend Killer. Mm -hmm. Orton was younger and more energetic, while Michaels was older and more experienced. These two gave it 110%, which is one mistake be enough to cost them the match. At one point, it looked like Randy Orton had capitalized on that one mistake when he countered Sweet Chin Music into an RKO. Woo! However, HBK kicked out. When winning clean, didn't work, the young Orton decided to get dirty. With some help from the dirtiest player in the game, Ric Flair, the legend killer was able to defeat the legend. From one member of Evolution to another, That's crazy. let's find out who was the first person to kick out of Batista's finisher, the Batista Bomb. At WrestleMania 20, every member of Evolution, except Triple H, teamed up to fight Mick Foley and The Rock in a two-on-three handicap match. Despite having the advantage, Flair, Orton, and Batista <laughs> had a time taking out the Rock and Sock connection. Oh, However, man, take me back. a few cheap shots, Evolution was able to gain control. One of those cheap shots was when Batista snuck into the ring and hit Rock with a Batista bomb. Such a oh, great moment. Orton over to get the pin, one, but somehow two. the great one kicked out. However, great one. the RKO was finally enough to get the one, two, three. I do wonder if Mick Foley got in trouble backstage, since it looked like he barely sold Randy Orton's finisher. To Foley's credit, he yeah. was the first person to know self finishing move to see those incidents watch wow that's oh man this this is an informative video pretty cool 
I said at the beginning of this video, I, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of just multiple moves, multiple finisher moves always being the thing to like like kick out of. In fact, fun fact, when I got into NXT, like watching NXT, the one thing I thought was very refreshing is when someone hit their finisher move, for the most part, the match was over. That was it. It was over. And I, I just found myself on the main roster. It's, I don't I don't see it as much, but I do see it sometimes. I, I saw myself on the main roster seeing a lot of matches like supposed to be ending when someone hit their finisher and it's it doesn't i think the most egregious one i think we can all agree on seth rollins the fiend hell in a cell do y'all remember how many curb stomps <laughs> the fiend got hit with comment down below let me know i know it was a ridiculously absurd amount to the point where it was like it made his finishing move look it made his finishing move look awful that was probably the most absurd time I could ever think of where a wrestler finishing move got hit so many times it didn't look devastating. The Fiend's supernatural powers made Seth Rollins' curb stomp look like a complete goddamn joke. So, but like I said, it just makes, it just depends on the story they're trying to tell and if they don't overdo it like they did there. So comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys a fan of when WWE or any other wrestling promotion do the person hits the finisher and then they kick out? Or do you think finishers should be a one and done situation? If someone hits the finisher, they should not be able to kick out no matter what the circumstance is. Because I know some people are in that camp of, no, it doesn't matter. Don't do that. Or some people are like, it's okay, just in moderation. Which side are you guys on? Is it okay in moderation or no? Don't do that shit at all. Hit the finisher once. Call it a day. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road 2. 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.